Good morning and a warm welcome to one and all. Greetings to all on the occasion of Lori, Makar Sankranti, Mag Bihu and Pongal. We continue with our 111th virtual webinar of Sadgun Sang Beat. Our topic for today is Indian Ethos, the Lighthouse for MSME. It shall be taken up by Dr. Raj Agarwal. He shall be covering what is Indian ethos, how Indian ethos in, is an integral part of MSME, what is the process of Indian MSMEs in current situation, what are the challenges Indian MSMEs are facing currently. Let's quickly take a look at the agenda. We start with the virtual inauguration by Dr. Sundar Kataria. Invoke the blessings of deity by chanting of Gayatri Mantra, introduction of speaker, presentation by Dr. Raj Agrawal, question and answer session, and then close this session. Sadgun Sang, conceived and driven by Dr. Sundar Kataria, driven with a mission to elevate the quality, safety, and environmental awareness levels of industry. Sadgun Sang is a series of educative, informative events aiming to eliminate professionals on possible solutions to current issues of industry and economy. A brief introduction of Dr. Sundar Kataya. He is the Chairman and Managing Director for International Certification Services Private Limited. He's done his doctorate in business management and he's also a mechanical engineer. He started his career with India's first nuclear power plant, RAPP at Rawat Bhatta, Kota, built by Indian engineers. He worked as nuclear scientist for 11 years and successfully completed and commissioned the plant. He worked with Engineers India Limited, the first batch of engineers to develop Bombay High Offshore Oil and Gas Fields, Mega Offshore Complex Platform, Trunk and Submarine Pipelines, Underwater Inspection, and indig indigenation of oil and gas equipment, etc. He has also worked with DNV, the largest classification society, for 17 years at various capacity for the certification of fixed offshore installations, submarine pipelines, onshore projects, and personal qualification underwater, underwater inspection drivers. He is the founder of India's first con certification conformance assessment body established in the year 1999. The provider of total quality solution, certification of management system, ISO, inspection and testing and training qualification of personnel. He has received Lifetime Achievement Award for the contribution for the corrosion technologies from NACE International by NIGIS under NACE USA. He is a social worker, protection of life, asset, environmental and safety. I now request Dr. Kataya to virtually inaugurate this session. Please join us for the recitation of Gayatri Mantra.
a brief introduction of our keynote speaker dr raj agarwal he is professor and director of all india management association center for management education aima cme he has done his phd from allahabad university he has more than 35 years of academic experience of working in prestigious national institutions a prolific writer and keen researcher he has written more than 100 articles in leading national and international journals please welcome dr raj agarwal over to you sir thank you thank you manshi for your introduction and thank you for uh, inviting me in this prestigious webinar first of all i am very sorry because there is some technical problem so my system is responding and then again not responding sometimes there is a voice problem sometimes there is some other technical problem uh, so i am not able to find it out so that's why i have joined by phone so if some technical issues that emerge so please bear with me uh, the topic uh, this indian ethos lighthouse for msme this is definitely very very interesting and uh, uh, very interesting in a sense that uh, uh, somebody has thought that how msme is a part of indian ethos if you see and do a careful examination and evaluation of definitions uh, across nation so we have seen in india that small scale industries or micro small and medium size enterprises this is what is named by government this is having a different meaning and implications but what is important in this particular meaning and implication that 99% msmes uh, they consist of informal sector and when we see and when we talk about informal sector then obviously the approach of uh, indian ethos this is going to be very very pertinent in this particular regard we know that informal sector is distinguished by diverse employment organization of production and ties to the formal sector you see that when we come out from our home or in a morning we we get a lot of services so most of these services are coming still from the informal sector this milk is coming this bread is coming this newspaper is coming this uh, other uh, essential items which are important for our survival they are coming so they are generally supplied by the informal sector there is nothing like this uh, this uh, formal sector 9 to 5 and uh, 9 to 5:30 timing there is nothing like this this five days week this milk is coming every day this uh, this uh, bread is coming every day and uh, other essentials by which we are going to survive uh, they are coming each each and every day likewise this is small small shopkeepers we see in a market uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, small small stalls we see in a market this is all this is this informal sector this informal sector is giving employment and in fact this majority of this employment this is created by the informal sector so 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 this is a kind of this diverse employment means that where this uh, this uh, semi skilled or this uh, this non skilled workers those who are not involved directly in agriculture agriculture they are getting employment in this informal sector and this informal sector is very diverse and this informal sector is assisting to assisting to organize industries whether small whether medium sized or even with this last sector which we may say that this is in a formal way 
formal way means that there is a proper uh, proper timing there are the social security rules like provident fund like leaps etc are are applicable but in case of informal sector this is not applicable and there are so many studies which have been conducted and these so many studies definitely have pointed out that how this informal sector in terms of diverse employment in terms of uh, in terms of uh, this uh, removing poverty or this is what that uh, generating income so then this uh, this uh, quite uh, this uh, somewhere around 40 to 50 crore people they can get their livelihood but this is not organized this is not formal uh, like uh, like uh, going office coming coming back from the office or going to factory coming back to the uh, going to the f factories right so this is what that they lack this formal as well as this hierarchical structure and this is a very important part, part of the indian ethos i'll go <laughs> <laughs> come on this particular issue that why this is a part of this Indian ethos. So accordingly, changes in industrial structure and their consequences for small business and employment must be considered in a context of informal sector also. If we, if, if we want to remove poverty, if we want to remove unemployment in a country, then the one of the most important uh, factor of our economy, this informal sector, which is a part of this MSME sector, it must be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. So this is what that uh, this informal sector, along with the small scale industries, uh, along with this, uh, this large scale industry, this is what uh, most of the economics they say that uh, uh, this is also important that how we are coming out with low level equilibrium trap and breaking the vicious poverty cycle poverty cycle and uh, this has also proved by various kind of theories and uh, for last so many years there is the emphasis that how uh, development economics is going to prevail means that how inclusiveness with sustainability sustainable development uh, this is going to be the uh, agenda for development and a major emphasis when we talk about sustainability, when we talk about this inclusiveness, then, uh, then a major agenda is what that, how we are going to emphasize for creating employment opportunities, for removing poverty. Then in that particular area, this informal sector, which is a part of MSME, this is very important part. Mm. So this is first uh, this introductory background and now this Indian ethos, you see that um, we have worked and done a lot of work on Indian ethos. So this uh, four important uh, mantras of Indian ethos, which emerges, it is like this artha, uh, artha dharma, kama and moksha. Right. So this, as you know, that in Indian ethos, this ultimate objective is what that how we are going to attain the moksha. But for moksha, what is important that how we are, what kind of ways in a judicious manner, when we say in a judicious manner, so obviously this is what dharma. Uh, dharma through dharmic way, uh, judicious manner, uh, means that uh, nothing immoral should happen. Uh, we are making money, means artha. Uh, and then karma, doing our karm, our, our karm. This is the, and then ultimate objective through dharma is what to attain moksha. Moksha, right? And uh, ka, uh, this, uh, this artha karma. Uh, this is most important part for our, for all human beings, for their development and for their growth. Uh, it may be more, it may be less, but it it should be based on dharma. Hmm? Dharma. So this is what that uh, each and every individual, uh, uh, if following the path of dharma, so according to Indian sastra, uh, they are going to attain the attain the moksha. Right now. When we talk about this artha, then in our system, in our system from ancient period, 
a approach of economic development this has uh, this has happened uh, how this has happened that uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this agriculture mm, that was one of the primary equity but uh, after agriculture uh, depending on the skills of the people depending on their their competency in our rural areas and as well as so called uh, urban areas the, for their survival for their prosperity there was a very large development of cottage industries uh, they were known as cottage industries or in hindi we, we call it kutu kutir udyog uh, so these cottage industries basically hmm, were providing the employment were creating the uh, creating the mode of production and what was most important part that according to the skills according to the climate according to the uh, according to the cities they have developed huh? like uh, in noida also or nearby noida in meerut also or this is what that uh, in uh, this muradabad in uh, priyag uh, or this uh, this uh, this is what uh, near banaras uh, you can uh, you can get a large number of cottage industries this is what that carpet work uh, this is what that uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, this related work there in that particular area so these cottage industries were developed in a large scale large scale uh, these were also food related industries and this is this is a unique characteristics not only in one part of india but this is a unique characteristics everywhere every part of india every part whether we go to karnataka whether we go to this uh, this uh, this uh, kerala uh, so, or we go to other state, uh, states so we find that uh, you see that the combination of climate combination of their culture combination of their social fabric a combination of uh, the kind of uh, um, kind of skills they have developed uh, whether this is a coastal areas so there were the there were the large number of small scale of cottage industries they came into existence now up to Uh, the, somewhere around a uh, 17th century century these cottage industries small scale industries we are providing the enough employment large scale employment after agriculture and these were the sources of high income and through this way this india was one of the uh, prosperous nation in the world and uh, these small scale industries they they became the backbone of indian economy but uh, changes happens this is what that industrial revolution came into existence in 18th century this uh, power uh, came and then uh, emphasis on large scale industries this is power based industries uh, coal became important because thermal power became very important uh, this engine came into existence and then this large scale industries came into Uh, came into existence and then this has also led to the change in a system of governance governance these the means that from monarchy this system of this uh, this uh, this uh, capitalism or this system of this expansion expansionism uh, in a form of british power that came in india that came in india and then their interest was different uh, different in this sense that uh, their purpose as an objective objective was to extract as much as money why exporting to india and why not importing from india so by exporting to india definitely they would have accumulated huge amount of foreign exchange and they did 
and similar kind of policies were adopted. And why not importing means that Indian industries like uh, textile, small scale industries, textile, spices, uh, food, grain, whatsoever were there, this uh, gold, uh, garments, uh, this is ornament, uh, this is handicraft, uh, which were the backbone of this small and cottage industries, these were destroyed systematically. Right. So, so our economy became agriculture dominant economy when these you know, these industries were destroyed. Then uh, this is what that those who were working in these industries and those who were the owner in these industries they have shifted in agriculture. They shifted in agriculture and then uh, this agriculture too became uh, became stagnant and then per capita income that too declined significantly. Uh, this unemployment, this uh, this uh, widespread uh, famine, uh, starvation that has that has that uh, all these things were started, and India became one of the poorest nation in the world. In the world after independence, uh, this uh, this our economy that was totally stagnant. But what is important that after that again. This uh, somehow this are cottage industries are small scale industries. They not they survived and they came into our existence. And after independence, uh, uh, there was again an emphasis. And then in a time, I will come back on my uh, my approach that in this time of this balanced development, sustainable development, inclusive development, role of this small scale industries, this is becoming very, very significant. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. So currently we can very well categorize MSME <coughs> Sorry. in terms of this qualitative criteria. And when we talk about this qualitative criteria, so then we have to see mode, mode of production, their market position, their management style, uh, workers, product type, what kind of organizational structure, both uh, uh, specifically formal MSMEs they are having, what kind of legal positions they have, uh, what kind of output market they have and what kind of uh, input market uh, they have hmm. uh, so 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 these uh, uh, eight nine uh, qualitative criteria uh, these are very very important and then what uh, then when we are going to judge and find it out the uniqueness of msmes uh, so then we have to see uh, see three important dimension uh, means not sector but sub sectoral mm, coverage of various types of activities like uh, i said uh, textile uh, so textile is one broad area mm. But there, within textile, there is a sub-sectoral area, uh, uh, starting from uh, raw material. Uh, so their MSME, informal sector of MSME, they are working. So one has to see in this way. Um, spatial. So means that how uh, they are located in urban areas, how they are located in uh, rural areas, and what kind of this uh, this uh, this uh, this relationship they have when they are located in this area. Then again, when we see uh, formal, informal, um, medium-sized industries, uh, small industries and then um, uh, very very small tiny micro industries and then informal then we have to see what is the scale is the size of the enterprises mm, enterprises this is this is very very important uh, important uh, so 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 in that particular context uh, when we talk about uh, institutional measures uh, so so currently here we see that government of india has taken several measures this uh, this uh, first uh, the new criteria uh, based on investment and turnover in plant and machinery for micro industries for small industries for medium in industries 
uh, in manufacturing enterprises and enterprises rendering services also that has been announced uh, investment in in plant and machinery or equipment uh, this is this should not be more than 1 crore and annual turnover not more than 5 crore so 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 you may question that there must be a lot of msmes they are attending this conference because why this limit is defined because on that basis, this categorization can be done. And based on this categorization, there are the various incentives, incentives in procurement, incentives in, uh, in production, in incentives that how much uh, private, uh, public sector is going to acquire, uh, going, to, going to procure from MSME, like government is also going to procure. These have been announced. Likewise, various kind of this, uh, this, uh, uh, this subsidies uh, based on that they have been announced in case of uh, small this is in case of one crore and five crore this is in case of micro in case of a small investment in plant and machinery or equipment it should not more than 10 crores and annual turnover not more than 50 crores so one can very well find it out that investment of one crore and turnover of five crore this is coming in micro and investment of 10 crores and turnover of 50 crores this is coming now in small and in case of medium uh, investment of 50 crores and annual turnover uh, not more than 250 crores this is coming in medium this is coming in medium and beyond that there is an informal sector because as i said that based on one survey uh, this uh, this uh, this MSME mm, uh, micro small and medium this is hardly two to three percent mm. and um, uh, informal sector uh, which is uh, where this investment has not been designed defined uh, where turnover has not been defined this is a part of informal sector and which for which a proper uh, criteria because this is informal so that's why so far there is no uh, criteria which has been developed uh, so what is important that uh, what kind of institutional measures um, government is going to take uh, so then uh, this uh, this uh, this msme sector can develop in a uh, right perspective mm -hmm. so as far as this institutional measures are considered so we know uh, the budget for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme uh, this has gone up uh, in 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 i think that 1 crore uh, 1 lakh crore and then uh, this uh, this uh, uh, th there is again a step that how chamber Mm, in each districts is going to uh, going to be established to monitor as well as to see whether this kind of fund this is going to be going to be utilized in a proper manner for the development of uh, development of industries msmes and this uh, this should also help uh, uh, msme entrepreneur uh, working under one district one product scheme uh, to learn the benefit of the fund uh, so this is one of the uh, one of the important steps uh, th this has been taken uh, under this uh, odop one district one product scheme um, scheme likewise uh, this uh, this uh, this government has also uh, announced that uh, raising uh, raising and accelerating msme program ram uh, so this is again an initiative of uh, government of India. Uh, so here this World Bank has also supported by dollar 500. Uh, so 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 how COVID hit uh, MSMEs? They are going to be going to be going to be further uh, further uh, revived, and then they are going to be the part of. Uh, part of development pro process. Uh, uh, so, 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 so there are so many other schemes like uh, this uh, zero defect, uh, zero effect, uh, Jed uh, scheme. 
this credit guarantee trust for micro and small enterprises cgtmc uh, so so likewise there is a there is a scheme uh, for this uh, this credit guarantee also uh, so by these schemes etc government is focusing that how uh, how this msme sector this is going to be going to be effective and going to be a uh, important partner in our development process likewise this most of the scheme this special credit link capital subsidy for uh, subsidy um, for msme uh, this was also announced by the government likewise with the pro this scheme is also having a provision of 20% capital subsidies for procurement of service equipment through institutional credit emergency credit line guarantee scheme so 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 these are the institutional measures which has taken taken by the government uh, government uh, to develop the, a kind of uh, kind of uh, support for this msme uh, because and what is most important part that uh, over the period of time as i said that uh, how this transformation of this msme that has taken place from uh, from this earlier this uh, cottage industries and cottage industries are still dominant and how they have come in this services sector and in services sector this msmes they are playing a very important role and in fact uh, employment potential income generation in this sector this has increased tremendously uh, so um, so uh, so what is important uh, important is that uh, in services sector uh, travel and tourism um, this is one of the important area uh, so so where uh, where uh, the several steps has been taken taken india as you are aware that india ranked 34 in travel and tourism report published by world economic forum and then travel tourism and hospitality where the businesses to be crippled by the by the by the covid in covid and then there was a need that how various kind of this support that uh, that can be taken so currently there are the various schemes by which uh, um, these steps are uh, taken uh, taken uh, so so we know that uh, there are more than 50000 people working as a travel agent and over a la over a lakh tour operators uh, so so what is important that uh, there must be a, a good schemes by which uh, financial support that can also be generated and and this uh, and through this way uh, this uh, the, this sector can uh, can further grow uh, so 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 because we know that there is a interlinkages effect so once uh, this sector is going to be revived completely this travel tourism and hospitality although this is reviving very very rapidly so so what is important that there can be a interlinkages uh, between other sectors also uh, so government must uh, must uh, take steps in that direction also uh, now agriculture industry so here this uh, this msme they too have a very important area important part and this is something which is prevailing for so many years so many thousands of years so what is important that how these are going to be going to be made viable how these are going to be made more and more employment oriented uh, and how the how by use of this technology uh, these are going to create more and more employment opportunity because there is a survey conducted by a national bank for agriculture and uh, and rural De uh, development nawad and uh, then uh, this uh, this they have also assessed the impact of uh, um, covid on agriculture and uh, this and they noticed that uh, the impact uh, was on raw material pr pr prices production cash flow constraint employment supply chain disruptions export and consumer sentiments demand uh, so this sector was damaged during this pandemic uh, in terms of raw material price level 
employment, uh, production level, consumer de demand and supply chain disruption. So, so means that there was also a decrease in output and employment. Um, employment uh, when they have taken some sample districts. So definitely, uh, and then there was a negative impact on consumer demand, consumer demand. So what is most important part that although that the revival that has started and several kind of schemes which have been announced, as I said earlier, definitely making a revival but but when we talk about india when we talk about um, about last sector which is providing employment uh, so 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 there is a need that uh, we should uh, focus and specifically uh, raw material prices production uh, cash flow constraint as well as this employment opportunities um, supply chain disruption which was badly affected in uh, rural areas and then currently there is a good export of a good potential of exports of agriculture products from msme sectors and so 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 means that there is a need um, that um, we must focus uh, and then uh, through combined effort uh, effort by different stakeholders um, this agriculture based msmes uh, should be given more and more emphasis um, uh, there is a uh, there is a package of 20 lakhs uh, under atman nirbhar bharat abhiyan or self like uh, india campaign uh, so 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 in that particular package also uh, this uh, this uh, there are so many mm, programs uh, which have been announced uh, by the government of india uh, and is specifically to 18000 msmes which are coming well within this self reliant india fund uh, to promote their business uh, so uh, but what is important that overall demand for metal minerals uh, which dropped sig significantly during covid um, by resulting lower prices uh, these uh, this demand still needs to be uh, needs to be recovered uh, and for that uh, there is a need that uh, uh, we should take some effective uh, measures uh, to increase this uh, another area when we know uh, this is this is very important because this is one of the important area of indian msmes and this is based on indian indian ethos why indian ethos because uh, our social fabric, our cultural fabric, uh, our, uh, our diversity, social, uh, cultural diversity, this is very much associated with this. And our creative and uh, artistic, uh, 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 creative, uh, uh, creativeness, this is also reflected. This is handicraft industry. And India is one of the largest exporter of handicraft product to the world. Uh, handicapped, handicapped and bloom industry and uh, these are basically you see handicraft hand loom so means that hand is used not power much and uh, still india is having a dominant uh, dominating uh, position and this is the second largest after agriculture in terms of providing uh, providing employment Mm -hmm. So definitely, this uh, this uh, this export which uh, suffered due to pandemic, and still there is a large demand of Indian handicraft handloom products uh, all over the world. So how by taking the appropriate steps, uh, this can be this can be uh, this can be revived uh, up to a large extent because you know that currently uh, our balance of payment situation in terms of current account deficit is uh, becoming uh, bad and uh, our this uh, this deficit in balance of payment this is increasing in current account this is increasing you know that this year there is also a decline in our foreign exchange reserves so, so there is a need that how we can increase our export uh, substantially, um, and this this is one of the potential area uh, where there is a lot of demand in several part of the country. Government is also aware artisans and craftsmen. We know 
आर बोथ क्रिएटिव इंडिविजुअल हु क्रिएट समथिंग बाई हैंड देर फोर दे आर इंटरेस्ट शुड बी प्रोटेक्टेड एंड दे आर मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन वर्किंग इन वेरियस काइंड ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट प्रोजेक्ट क्रिएटिव प्रोजेक्ट प्रोजेक्ट सो सो दे दे मस्ट गेट गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर इनकम जनरेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर इम्प्लॉबिलिटी सो सो ऑल दो गवर्नमेंट हैज टेकन सेवरल स्टेप्स लाइक दिस बाई अनाउंसिंग नेशनल हैंडी Web development programs. Uh, so this includes marketing support of support and services. This also includes skill development in handicraft center. This includes very famous scheme, this uh, Ambedkar Hastasip Vikas Yojana. And then there is a direct benefit to artisans and infrastructure and technology support through research and development. Now uh, you see that in each and every part of of our country, whether this is UP, Bihar, uh, this handicraft uh, development, uh, handicraft industries are located. Uh, this uh, this and this is a form of this cottage industries. And then uh, these artisans, craftsmen, so definitely they should be motivated. motivated um, to work uh, work uh, work and to get the benefit of these kind of program uh, so then india can increase their export can create this employment opportunities and then there is a, another important scheme and which is giving good results this is comprehensive handicraft cluster development um, scheme uh, we know that uh, these uh, this uh, handicraft center uh, they have they have developed in some centers uh, and so this is having a cluster cluster in a form of raw material cluster in a form of this this uh, this uh, this presence of this craftsmen presence of artisans cluster in a form of this uh, marketing cluster in a form of this interlinkages support so this cluster uh, scheme uh, that has been launched clusters first have been identified cluster schemes have been launched and these clusters are becoming a good source of direct export hmm? uh, so the so the purpose and objective uh, uh, this scheme is having to assist the artisans and entrepreneur to by using this latest and educate training and human resource development inputs coupled with market linkages and production diversification to boost production and export so in last few years this is what that direct export by creating this kind of this uh, this capacity this has started this has started in ludhiana this has started in karnataka uh, this is what that uh, this in uh, this badoi uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this has started so this is something very unique um and then this is having a lot of potential and uh, this one can learn from the example from other countries also ambedkar uh, uh, hastasip vikas yojana uh, so this is another likewise handicap uh, handicap uh, handicap mega cluster mission another very important uh, important scheme to create infrastructure at block level by using the newest technology design innovations a suitable training human resource development and appropriate marketing here uh, actually you see that uh, new kind of this digitization new kind of technology uh, like design innovation etc these have uh, have also been used in handicraft industry in other related areas through these kind of schemes so definitely they have this lot of potential a lot of potential then there is a technology upgradation fund that has also uh, created uh, and this fund has been created specifically in handicraft center uh, to purchase new machineries and equipment factory building and renovation of existing factory building and then there is another one handicraft hand integrated handroom development scheme uh, so this is basically to form this self help group self uh, self help groups ssgs 
so basically uh, these groups were given uh, given money for buying raw material machinery training in weaving dyeing designing and business development uh, so such kind of schemes definitely given lot of impetus and having these sectors are having a lot of potential to develop in a right perspective right when i say right perspective so means through modernization means that within this uh, cottage industries if this modernization is going to be mixed then definitely they may create a lot of potential for export we have seen that how this textile sector in bangladesh this has come into existence and become one of the uh, one of the major exporter how the textile and, and then other uh, small scale industries in vietnam uh, they have developed and became very very important sector so not only in, in, in india but all over the world this role of this msme now this is very very important and uh, and uh, the indian uh, msmes they are more or less part of this indian ethos and what is important that how this indian ethos of this karma dharma uh, and then this uh, this artha uh, this is going to be going to be mixed with the with the ethical uh, means the dharmic approach to attain uh, attain the right kind of objective another one this is this marketing assistance uh, very very important that uh, you see when we talk about this marketing and so not only at a domestic market but uh, at international market global market Uh, because you have to export you have to import in in a domestic market you cannot confine in your area hmm? now market is expanded up to india now there is a gst one uniform tax uh, uniform tax so means that how your product are going to be marketed all over all over all over world Uh, so we know that various kind of this trade fair we know that various kind of this international uh, uh, trade fair uh, ex exhibitions etc are organized so here this is small uh, and then informal sector and specifically uh, specifically small how they can participate how they can participate not at uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, local level but at national level at international level so here this uh, this uh, this uh, the kind of this concerns which small scale sector which they are facing uh, they are facing uh, increasing exposure and creating quality leads because there is a competition in india there is a competition and in abroad there is a competition uh, so 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 how they can get the exposure and how they can get the quality lead uh, you know that each and every embassy is also having their business department and uh, their 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 msmes are uh, are registered they are providing this uh, their you know, brochure they are providing their uh, advertisement etc uh, so 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 one can find it out and this can happen when there is a marketing how this digital marketing this can be uh, evolved how they can adopt uh, digital marketing and uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, solutions like uh, email marketing platforms search engine optimization tools social media Mm, etc how they can use because they have to do marketing at a global uh, global level and uh, through this uh, social media uh, through this uh, optimization search engine through this digital uh, digital marketing obviously by sitting at home by having a one man company or one man firm they can do it but uh, there is a need that there is there is a um, there is, is a assistant there is a support to them in terms of budget in terms of uh, organization institution mm, because we know that most of them they have insufficient resources in terms of money personnel as well as time mm, uh, how they can improve their visibility uh, by producing this high high quality leads and how they can have this selecting the appropriate social media channel because you see that uh, china vietnam bangladesh indonesia mm, these countries uh, through their high quality leads 
uh, through this uh, this selecting the right kind of this uh, media channel uh, then by having a lower price lower price because uh, because by optimizing their production through reducing their cost uh, they are getting better uh, orders and this has affected severely to our industries uh, so 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 marketing is having a very important component and so means that our firms which are disorganized firms uh, how they are going to use uh, these modern means uh, and then they can market all over the world uh, so so, uh, so, uh, so so how their uh, content is going to be um, going to be marketed um, so so although there are various kind of cooperation um, ic scheme uh, known as international cooperation scheme that provides financial assist assistance on reimbursement on a basis of airfare space rent freight charges advertisement publicity charges entry registration fees registration come membership certificate charges export insurance uh, premium or on re, uh, uh, reimbursement basis uh, to encourage micro and small enterprises to develop domestic market and promotion of new market access initiative no, sorry international market uh, so and then there is also a procurement and marketing support scheme mm, to facilitate market linkages for effective implementation of public procurement policy uh, to educate msme on various phases uh, of business development and uh, and what is most important part within this there is also a to create overall awareness about trade fairs latest market technique and uh, related such uh, product uh, so definitely a in infrastructure institutional infrastructure in terms of policies in terms of incentives in terms of schemes that have been developed and there is a there is a lot of emphasis uh, but uh, even uh, this uh, creating this uh, entrepreneurial culture creating this right culture uh, creating uh, a culture for technical know how although there is a champion scheme for uh, promoting uh, uh, technical know how which includes intellectual property rights uh, design improvement building up uh, uh, this zero defect zero effect uh, uh, scheme digitally empowering through digital msme promoting and supporting untapped individual creativity and then promoting latest technology in manufacturing and knowledge based innovation uh, so uh, uh, again most important scheme within this aspire scheme for promoting innovation and rural industry entrepreneurship that that have been announced and uh, doing quite well uh, government is also doing lot to create a infrastructure hmm. like this uh, micro and small enterprises cluster development program uh, and then uh, this uh, industrial states uh, uh, etc huh? uh, but uh, but uh, electricity water roads uh so 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 in all msmes uh, which are uh, located in uh, crucial area uh, still needs to be created another important point shut down inadequate finance bad assets of this msmes uh, uh, needs to be taken into care and uh, there are several schemes which one can find it out on government side msme ministry side um, then uh, this uh, this uh, this industry risk also that can also be you know, also one can find it out on government side etc are there uh, but what is important that uh, by taking into consideration uh, this uh, particular aspect uh, this is of this indian ethos that how what way forward we can take uh, because you see that uh, there is there is no need of any kind of discussion now and this is this is uh, this is well accepted that uh, that how msme mm, uh, over the period of time can be uh, can be a mm, most important uh, uh, factor uh for generating employment uh, for balanced and inclusive and sustainable development uh, so uh, so there is a need that how awareness um, among indians 
that can be created so more and more innovation may take place and when people are taking interest educational institution specifically engineering engineering college polytechnic etc uh, they are creating labs uh, for smes they are introducing subject for msmes so definitely they can contribute a lot uh, in a process of development so that kind of approach is required i i think that uh, i have to stop here that's fine is it okay hello Hello. Mansi. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mansi. Yeah. So fine. So so I have finished. Right, sir. Uh, the session is open. The session is now open for the question and answers. Uh, anyone who has the questions may please uh, put it in the chat box or may unmute themselves. And uh, may ask the questions. So there's one question from uh, Soumya. How to ethics and values can be built in MSMEs? So, okay. So I have to answer. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, when we talk about this Indian ethos, so in, in Indian ethos, everything is based on dharma. And dharma is a dharm or dharma is a broader part of this values and ethics. So as I said, artha, artha means uh, earth, wealth, creation of wealth. So creation of wealth, this is something which is very legitimate in Indian ethos. Artha, karma, artha, kama. These are also legitimate, but what is important that these should be based on dharma. Means that we should not indulge in earning black money, we should not indulge in charging high prices uh, or making money, unnecessarily making money. Means that uh, prices should be reasonable. Mm -hmm. Means that uh, this is what that uh, whatsoever profit, margin, mm, that is justified. One should earn, mm, uh, one should earn. Uh, one should not accumulate money unnecessarily. Hmm? So you have muted yourself. Ethical and uh, so so means that and again so, uh, it has been seen by various studies uh, etc. That uh, those who have uh, done their work with dharma means by following ethics and values they are very successful they are happy they are successful and those who are violating values violating ethics earning money by black money through corruption through some other means uh, so definitely they are finding themselves in a problem Yeah, fine. Okay, sir, so, uh, I have one question, and uh, this relates to you know some very pertinent observation that you know even in the place where I stay in New Bombay, we have a lot of industrial areas around this place, you know, and uh, unfortunately we have seen a lot of these uh, industries, you know, MSMEs particularly openly you know violating environmental laws and 
just uh, polluting the surroundings and i think uh, that uh, despite all the incentives given by the government to them i don't see an organized program of sensitizing these people to these kind of ethics you know of sustainability of uh, you know environmental spirituality uh, and i talk this from i say this from observation you know over the last 20 years bigger companies somehow were afraid of losing their reputation you know in case there is a public complaint or there is a media report but many of these small industries you know they still have not been sensitized in an organized manner I just wanted to know your uh, views on this and how you know as a very influential person in delhi can you actually do something about it you know with the concerned authorities in addition to giving them money capital incentives and other types of encouragement this should also go hand in hand dr raj please actually what happens this is my personal opinion what happens that uh, like when i was a student of economics uh, i am talking about 1980-81 then uh, this i read a book limits to growth this was a book of uh, this club of rome and uh, then this debate was started that uh, they are talking, everybody is talking about growth and this book is talking about limits to growth. Hmm. So, so one opinion was that, that uh, this book is against development, against growth. Hmm. But just after that, uh, what happened that uh, steps like North-South dialogue, hmm, steps like the South-South dialogue, hmm, then this uh, this uh, this sustainability this uh, this uh, uh, environment uh, this has become one of the part of uh, united nations also united nations also likewise in india likewise in delhi likewise in other metro cities so so means that somewhere this awareness in a big way Somewhere awareness is coming uh, gradually, but what is important that here this uh, various kind of this social groups, various kind of this organization, uh, this even this owners, even this uh, faculty members, institutions. Uh, so, so in my opinion, this whatsoever institute, Bombay is full of institutions, all kind of institutions are there. Uh, so somehow they may talk, uh, they may take steps by talking to the owner of these uh, factories, companies, and they may take steps and through uh, by taking this uh, steps, this awareness uh, uh, that can be created. So this is important, important for water, this kind of awareness that don't waste the water, preserve the water, this kind of awareness about uh, this environment, this kind of awareness about this forestation. Uh, so that should be the integral part, integral part. Uh, of our um, uh, agenda, uh, whether we talk about uh, this large scale industries, we talk about this small scale industries, we talk about this cottage industries, or we talk, talk about agriculture. So that should be the that should be an integral agenda. And what is important that that should be emphasized at macro level as well as micro level uh, macro level in various conferences various uh, various uh, this uh, seminar webinar textbook uh, then this class lectures at the micro level this by conducting some kind of this uh, training program also uh, so, so definitely this is what that uh, like minded institutions and organization they should take these steps well, correct right sir right sir thank you because I'm sure ki all of us are observing this. Ki mm. Even in places in Delhi, because I have a connection, I still am connected to Delhi. So, mm. the pro, I think, there are many industries in the Gali Gali, small scale, choti industry, one man show. But the way in which they are drains, the way they are drains, the way they are drains, the surroundings, the way they are solid waste, the way they are drains, the way they are so sensitization, unko, matab, uh, as you rightly said, it has to be part, 
आई मीन इट हैज टू बी एक्चुअली एनफोर्स इन इंडिया वो आते आते तो बहुत टाइम लग जाता है दैट काइंड ऑफ अवेयरनेस बिकॉज इवन नाउ सबकी नो द आईज आर ऑन द बॉटम लाइन की अन मतलब वहां व्हाट काइंड ऑफ मनी कैन आई मेक फ्रॉम दिस दिस एंटरप्राइज यू नो बॉटम लाइन वही है सारी मतलब एंड इन चीजों को एक्सपेंडिचर हेड माना जा रहा है आज भी इवन इन बिग और कंपनीज समटाइम्स यू नो सो ये थोड़ा सा है मतलब दिस इज व्हाट पर उस एरिया में ये लोकल जो है ना ये हमारा मैनेजमेंट एसोसिएशन भी है प्लस वो और भी ट्रेड एसोसिएशन इस ढंग के हैं ढेर सारे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो दे आर टॉकिंग दे आर टेकिंग स्टेप्स लेकिन कुछ ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के लिए वन कैन टॉक सो देन डेफिनेटली दिस इज व्हाट दैट देर आर सेवरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दे आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम इवन नॉट चार्जिंग चार्जिंग सिंगल 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 रूपी True, sir. True, true, true. Uh, because you know, uh, we were there, sir. Yesterday there were two days back there was a MSME event, and I think your uh, also friend, Mr. Ajay Thakur, also came to BSC. So, I mean, and in fact, he was remembering you, Mr. Sir. Raj sir, are in February, maybe BSC. Maybe you will also be. एड्रेस कर राज को परसों जैसे किस तरह से बातें हो रही थी एम एस एम ई में डॉक्टर अजय मिस्टर अजय वॉज ऑल्सो फॉन्डली रिमेम्बरिंग डॉक्टर राज यू नो हम लोग सोच भी रहे थे 24-25 को आप अवेलेबल हैं तो लेट्स अटेंड दिस इवेंट उन्होंने बताया सब कन्वेंशन हॉल में है तो आई वॉज जस्ट थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर सुदेश शर्मा थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर सुदेश शर्मा Are you getting me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, yeah, yeah, doctor. Okay. Please, uh, please. First of all, my compliment and greetings to Dr. Raj, and uh, very nicely he has uh, given bird eye view of the ethos and how the Indian industry MSME uh, the benefits which are there by government. The government has been doing quite a lot. Even I, for Dr. Raj, for your information, I also come. Belong to Rajasthan, from Udaipur, oh, where nice. way back in forties, my father started this training program. Udaipur, that time it was very small industries for wooden toys was there. When my father started, just to his uh, reason to start the uh, objective to start was to support the migrated people who had come from Pakistan. young people they didn't have uh, earning they didn't have employment so very hardship they had so my father with the government help he started the training center uh, he started the training center means uh, more innovative using the power human and power so that he could train them on the lathe machine wooden lathe machines to have better production and better earning and all and from there from the scratch he started when he started i remember he had only 30 of course that time i was in the school he has only 30 tra- training people at uh, is tra- undergoing training and finally in 15 20 years he could had the 100 per annum it was one year program and today yeah. you can see the odaipur industries is uh, to a uh, booming With yeah, this, this uh, quite a, quite a large job. number of MSMEs are there. And Rajasthan is famous for MSMEs, and right. in and specifically this handicraft. So Udaipur is uh, beautiful, and uh, uh, the kind of this uh, this artisans etc. are there in Udaipur, and kind of yes. industries are there. This is really remarkable. Yeah, uh, I do agree. It is very very nice. And uh, if you see now, there are certain areas where government has to put uh, which uh, i caught your word you use the cluster approach the yes cluster yes. approach is most important 
to support this MSME. Way back, I started this. I have uh, talked to many of the MSMEs group and other thing, but uh, there was very lukewarm response from their end. Even I wrote to uh, our uh, Rajay, chief minister at that time, that I want to start this program where direct we can support them innovation, new technique, new development, and all these things. But unfortunately, we didn't get the good support. The government has a lot of schemes, but those schemes are not reaching to the right men. Either the middlemen is take over, even for the handicraft and other food, they are very good artisans. But then middlemen who are the having big showrooms, they buy them at very low price and sell them at very high price. <laughs> How to tackle with that? Another thing, uh, my focus will be not only agriculture and other things, food industries. But if you see India, that uh, leather was a big industry, process of leather, then leather goods were very, very well. But after the Chinese, they dumped the, the Indian market. A uh, lot of people, artists, left behind. So those areas we had to look into it. Then uh, there are also shoes. If you shoes, now why this Chinese able to capture the world market? We are not. And lack of facility for quality control, lack of facility for testing facility. I had happened to visit Shenzhen in China. And I was amazed to see the laboratory which was there. It was in 60,000 square feet area laboratory testing the leather, leather goods, and all those things, using the modern technique, what is the life cycle, stitching, strength, uh, colors, toxicity of colors, many, many things, design, all the things were being tested there. So I think uh, say, since you are very well connected with the government of India and very well connected with the industries and institutions, as I understand, that uh, you can bring this issue, we have to focus those areas. It's very important. Fine. What I'll suggest, uh, Dr. Kataria, that uh, if you can send us a, uh, whatsoever you said, these are the very good areas. So time to time, whenever we are submitting a report or in this uh, convention, 24th, 25th, uh, this is basically based on G20, uh, uh, progress by collaboration, hmm. innovation, progress by. So, so then we can take up and we can uh, write, we can include, uh, we can in include, uh, Dr. Katrika. These are very good suggestions, uh, very good suggestions because uh, yeah, in cluster area, in leather industry, uh, and specifically in MSME, and specifically in cluster area, this is what that good potential, but uh, the kind of uh, export which may happen, this is not happening. It's not happening, sir. Ismay, please also take up this point, ki like Dr. Kataria, he has his offices in about uh, 15 to 20 locations all over the world, you know, so... And he is very dedicated to sensitizing people on quality, safety, environment, you know. So I think this is a webinar. This is also a kind of, you know, part of his CSR activity for MSMEs. Um, so what we can now actually do is we can all, we can focus particularly on, you know, the, uh, this part. These people, they blatantly ignore these aspects of safety and environment. You know, quality ka to wo log karte hai, ki quality ke bina their product doesn't sell. But as far as safety, safety bhi karte hai, because ek incident ho jata hai, to liability bhoat ho jati hai unki. To thoda bhoat safety pe dhyan de lete hai wo log. But yeh environment ko bhoat zyada hai na, matab last priority pe rakh rahe hai sab log. I think this is something which we request influential people like you to... And then Dr. Kataria will be very happy to take this part also in his mission mode, you know, kind of key. He is always available for, you know, collaborations in these kind of things. Or I think Mr. Uday wanted to say something. He had raised his hand. Uday is from the nuclear sector, you know, and he's a very avid observer of things and situations and a very avid reader also. So Uday ji, you had raised your hand. Yes, yes. Yeah, Actually, please. 
uh, just now also in that time you have raised the point about environmental aspects that are being ignored uh, several times and uh, first question was that regarding the ethos to be cultivated in msmes so actually these are very highly connected and you have raised a very nice point uh, i would say that uh, your observation regarding this environmental uh, non conformance or kind of negligence is actually departure from the indian ethos so what we need to insist is that uh, if you see uh, atithi devo bhav is there vasudeva kutumbakam is there so we don't see anything uh, we see everything as a cost uh, when you are not caring for the environment or uh, even he mentioned about uh, the limit of growth see actually when we start consuming ourselves or consuming the growth or the value that is created by your business that is that in itself is uh, eating its own merit in the eyes of the people as well as government and in all aspects so the larger point is that the indian ethos the topic today was uh, regarding the indian ethos and msmes so the departure from the indian ethos is uh, likely to erode uh, the kind of collaborative and innovative approach and uh, likely to malign our uh, culture as well uh, so i think this was the point actually you raised it well that uh, it is not for the environment it is for the business itself that it is important in the longer run then uh, you very I true think. i mean they very nicely put yaar yeah, actually abhi bhi dekhi na to put the tv on even now you know at this point of time we'll find a good debate going on on this joshi mat thing ye cracks jo aa rahe hain aur ye sab aa rahe hain na basically yes, so repercussion yes. bahut zyada ho rahe hain us cheez ke the only thing is i think we have not yet been fully sensitized and this must be about dr raj ka ya hona maybe it could be some divine intervention because he's so <laughs> because he's so influential you know in जब हम इंडियन इथाउस की बात करते हैं तो इंडियन इथाउस एक धर्म पर आ जाता है धर्म तो ये सारा का सारा धर्म है ये जो वैल्यू सिस्टम जो अर्थ में भी अर्थ अर्न करने में भी जो सिस्टम बनता है तो इट शुड बी बेस्ड ऑन सम काइंड ऑफ इथिक्स सम काइंड ऑफ वैल्यूज एंड दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ धर्म सो डेफिनेटली जो पॉलिसी से या जो डेवलपमेंट से जो निगेटिव अधर्म फैलता है जो निगेटिव इम्प्लीकेशन आते हैं तो उसके लिए अवेयरनेस की भी जरूरत है लोगों को एजुकेट करने की भी जरूरत है तो अगर ये बड़े अच्छे पॉइंट्स हैं इफ इफ यू पीपल कैन सेंड अस क्योंकि हमारे चेयरमैन हैं डॉक्टर जेस जुनेजा तो डॉक्टर जेस जुनेजा पहले एनएसआईसी के चेयरमैन एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर थे समवेयर इन 1991 एंड वेरी पैशनेटली ही इज प्रमोटिंग द कॉज ऑफ एमएसएमई इन इंडिया Uh, so he is the chair the, this ima is having a um, msme committee and dr jais juneja is the chairperson um, of this committee to main juneja sahab se baat karke jo dheron papers hum log idhar udhar bhejte hain ministry mein bhejte hain uthate hain ye sare ke sare issues pe dr juneja he can raise to aap log hamare sath mein collaborate kijiye कभी मीटिंग भी कर सकते हैं दिल्ली में या बाहर जहां भी चाहे मीटिंग या कोई सेमिनार कैपेसिटी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम वर्कशॉप एक्सेट्रा राइटिंग ये सब करते रहते हैं तो उसके थ्रू दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू प्रोपोजेट या या सर यू कैन आल्सो दैट दैट गिव्स मी एन आइडिया बिकॉज उदय इज आल्सो यू नो मैट ही इज वन ऑफ द मोर वेरी रिस्पॉन्सिबल पर्सन फ्रॉम द Uh, nuclear sector who shares the values of nuclear environmental sanctity you know because this is very one good, industry i can vouch for it ki jahan pe environment ko value mana jata hai and well, i sincerely uh, requ- i sincerely request you to abhi jaise mera background bhi aap dekhenge na this is a nuclear plant actually in the deep forest of uh, kaiga you know near karwad and uh, 
Soumya Madam has visited this place actually <laughs> because she was she has been very kind to you know take up a very 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 effective training program in uh, NPCIL with the, and I think hopefully we are going to revive it again this year you know I'm in touch with the uh, people there. So, kya ye jo ek paper I would request somebody some intellectually minded person like Mr. Uday to develop. And uh, then somebody like Dr. Raj can give him a platform of actually sharing case studies of environmental sanctity, which can be a lesson for these MSMEs, you know. So MSMEs are an event, hai na, so I think people like Uday, people like Dr. Kataria, all of them can be of very high high value to you. Definitely. You know? High yeah. value, you know, because you know, what is it in the day-to-day operations, mein, when we have these kind of events and we come in touch with each other, so every person is a source of energy and potential. Now yeah. it depends on all of us how much we tap that person's inner potential and uh, um, the competence and capability of that person or the organization that he or she represents. You know, so today, yes. your meeting may be possible. That something good can emerge out of it. For me, I too enjoy it. Me, too, it was very good. Kataria sir, aapka kuch hai, aap, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 we want to know more yeah. from you because you are now a basically a widely uh, traveled, widely yeah. read person and sari tarah ka exposure experience aapko. Thoda aur please, please throw some yeah. more light ki Indian ethos. Uh, uh, another question, yeah, another question which I would like to put a direct question to Dr. Raj since he is uh, having the powerhouse. <laughs> uh, one thing, uh, now the agro if you see, as our prime minister also has been pushing very hard to increase their income. Now, how the income can be increased? Because in India, we have small, small farms, not a large farms. It's not a big productivity. And uh, then uh, why we can have some cluster approach to provide them packaging facility like cut vegetables, which in Europe and Western countries, you get a lot of cut vegetables ready. And those things can be, uh, if you have a cluster approach and we have laboratories, we have facility for testing, we have facility for packaging and training to them, how they can increase the, which are 10 rupees a kg onion they are selling, if they dehydrate it uh, in the cluster approach, some uh, small factory they can put and de dehydrate it and sell it. They can get the 100 times the cost, 100 times the value. Similar, the cut vegetable, 10 rupees vegetable will cost, uh, easily you can sell it at 40 rupees kg. Plus it will also develop a lot of employment at agro. Somehow agro, we are not uh, looking in a big way. This, uh, I'm saying down is steep side. Active side, okay, we don't tell. They are very expert. They take uh, good seeds, good fertilizer. Everything is available. But on the downstream side, unfortunately, we are not developing them. So what do you say about it? You are, your perspective is very correct. But here in India, things take time. And specifically when we talk about agriculture, so obviously, uh, so many other non-economic issues, they came into existence. Uh, so, so there are definitely this MSME is one way by which this can be supported. But uh, SME itself needs, uh, needs to be supported, needs to be supported because SMEs, they too find a lot of challenges for their survival, for their survival and specifically in agriculture, specifically in agriculture. Uh, so, but definitely there is a need, there is an approach that uh, in that particular area, um, this emphasis should be given. Hello. Yeah, yeah, sir, we are, we are hearing you. Sir. Hmm. And unfortunately, what happened, that PPP, that uh, what module is there, it's not working, I don't know why. And because this, all the government uh, association and uh, all these things, they are closely controlled by them. They don't want to be transparent. Sorry to say, I think many of that uh, 
association will feel it bad about no you are right you are right in so many things there is no transparency even today so that's why i said that lot of rigidity lot of stagnation a lot of institutional factors lot of social factors lot of political factors <laughs> they are hampering they are hampering and all of sudden this board reform that is also not a solution because in urban areas you see that uh, this kind of environment has been developed but in rural areas this um, introducing board reforms there is no environment mm -hmm. there is going to be lot of political resistance so so that has to be countered so so in my opinion this uh, nobody will take these kind of steps unless until mm -hmm. Un, uh, um, this kind of step so this gradual change is there so that's why this is happening so this may ek angle ye bhi hai ki whatever the government comes out with that's okay ultimately it all depends on the individual you know in that village or in that city or in that locality ki the spirit of entrepreneurship kis mein hai abhi itne sare hamare farmers hain hum dekhte hain hamare gaon mein they have huge tracts of land and they have you know three sons four sons five sons and all of them are looking for employment on a lathe machine in the nearest city unme se wo kya hota hai ek ye ek i think it's in the dna also ki kon entrepreneur banta hai aur kon nahi banta hai na kabhi jiske dna mein wo hota hai jisne ya fir kisi dusre ko observe karke usne apne uske paas 40 acre land hai lekin usne kabhi aaj tak uski batti nahi jali ki yaar main isme chhota sa ek food processing unit dal ke and i can make more money by adding value to something you know hai na to lekin pass ke gaon mein ek banda hota hai aur fir wo kuch bahut kuch kar jata hai using this government subsidies and you know all this uh, aur wo fir baad mein then people start envying him are uski to kismat kitni achhi hai dekho aaj to wo hum hum to ek ek acre land pe 1 lakh rupaya nahi kama rahe hain wo apne aadhe acre se jo hai 10 lakh rupaye saal ka kama rahe hain matlab you know to ye jo spirit hai na ये स्पिरिट जैसा आपने कहा कि या तो स्कूल लेवल पे या दूसरे को ऑब्जर्व करके इंडिविजुअल्स में डेवलप होती है एंड एंड वन मोर थिंग दैट वी ऑब्जर्व डे फॉर यस्टरडे वाज आई थिंक आई थिंक आई वी नीड डॉक्टर राज ओपिनियन ऑन दिस कि देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ कंसल्टेंट्स हु नाउ क्लेम कि वी विल गेट यू ऑल द फैसिलिटीज ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट फॉर एग्जांपल इफ डॉक्टर कटारिया वांट्स टू अटेंड एन एग्जीबिशन समबडी वाज टेलिंग कि आप बाहर जाके एग्जीबिशन अटेंड कर लो और आपकी जो फंडिंग है ना उसकी आने जाने का खर्चा भी जो है वो गवर्नमेंट के प्रोविजन में है अभी वो मिल जाएगा आपको देन ही वाज जस्ट वंडरिंग इज इट दैट इजी और इज इट दैट दिस कंसल्टेंट्स विल हेल्प अस इन गेटिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ रीएंबर्समेंट ये ट्रू है क्या सर कि ये सब भी है इस लेवल तक नहीं ये जो गवर्नमेंट की स्कीम है ना तो इसमें डायरेक्ट अप्लाई कर दीजिए इन कंसल्टेंट की क्या जरूरत है आए हुए थे उस दिन दो तीन मतलब दे वर ट्राइंग टू यू नो दे वर ट्राइंग टू प्रमोट देम सेल्स यू नो वी फाउंड देम एनीवे आई सुमित जी आल्सो यू नो फॉर्चूनेटली वी कैन सी हिम स्माइलिंग सो एंड स्माइलिंग मींस ही वांट्स ही हैज a lot of sumit ji chup chap baithte hain baad mein fir sara situation aakne ke baad you know then he speaks and whatever he speaks is very pointed so sumit ji please we want to namaskar hear sir you. namaskar raj sahab uh, dr raj amazing amazing insight and very well taken all through the msme the indian ethos and i'm really moved about uh, the fact that you're saying the indian ethos is a synonymous and it comes from the indian dharma and the dharma and the scriptures have answers to almost everything that one would want to know ever whether it is in terms of spirituality business the way you conduct i i have a different take sir mera khali yahi kehna hai ki sir uh, ethical growth or ethical business needs a kind of a ethical environment for good sustainable and conducive growth ha i feel the environment because i am propelled by my competitors i am propelled the way the business is done by everybody and to stand out means to be out or stand apart how how do you get the ecosystem to work for a sustainable ethical business ethos it's i i think ecosystem bahut 
ज्यादा एक वैल्यू रखेगा इन हाउ आई कैन कंडक्ट माई बिजनेस एथिकली बिकॉज इफ देर इज अथिकल इको सिस्टम देन ऑब्वियसली आई हैव टू ट्रेड अलॉन्ग ओनली दैट पाथ बट इंडिया में वो एथिकल इको सिस्टम अवेलेबल नहीं है वेदर यू टॉक अबाउट अप्रूवल वेदर यू टॉक अबाउट गेटिंग देयर वेदर यू टॉक अबाउट पुटिंग अ ब्लू प्रिंट टूगेदर इफ or if the environment is very positive and the ecosystem is nice obviously people will tread along how do you develop that ecosystem around you without having to complain anywhere actually iska jo practical jo meri samajh mein answer aata hai what is this that this ethics and ethics this morality immorality corruption non corruption this is uh, this is also a individual matters individual choices and uh, it cannot happen that every time there is going to be 100% honesty or 100% ethics or 100% values hmm. this is something which is ideal so this sometimes uh, society is going to be more ethical sometimes going to be the less ethical sometimes government policies or this ecosystem whatsoever is there is going to be more or sometimes going to be less depending on so many factors so here this individual choice is very important individual choice and again this comes this in, uh, this uh, dharma uh, your indian ethos ki hmm. my dharm is this i'll do this and uh, when we we sub- uh, when we take some studies as i pointed out uh, this uh, this uh, studies this companies those who have lasted more than 100 years so in most the companies those who have lasted hmm, for uh, the last number of years so it has been noticed that companies those were having their value system those we are having hmm, having their ethical approach uh, so they were not only to uh, we are not able to survive but they were able to thrive and this happens with the individuals also jo imandar hai theek hai acha hai hmm. कम अन कर रहा है धीरे धीरे उसकी प्रॉस्पेरिटी भी बहुत तेज होती है और जो अनिथिकल है करप्ट है उसकी लाइफ जो इको लाइफ है वो होती भी बहुत शॉर्ट है वो कभी जेल में चला जा रहा है कभी यहाँ पर फिर वो लोग उससे बिजनेस करने के लिए भी नहीं तैयार होते हैं तो तो ये तो चलता रहेगा कभी इच्छिक्स कभी ज्यादा होगी किसी कंट्री में ज्यादा है किसी कंट्री में कम है तो ये अप्रोच तो चलती रहे लेकिन इसमें आपको इंडिविजुअली इंस्टीट्यूशंस को कि भाई हमारी वैल्यूज ये हैं हमारा धर्म ये एंड वी हैव टू फॉलो दिस एंड वी हैव नॉट टू कॉम्प्रोमाइज सब वो कॉम्प्रोमाइज कहा होते हैं मालूम है सुबह सुबह ये लोग तिलक लगाते हैं बुधवार को हनुमान जी के मंदिर में जाएंगे है ना और फिर सारे वो काम करेंगे जो मतलब अगेंस्ट दी against morals against ethics and even against you can say integrity basically you know yahan thoda sa dichotomy dikhti hai aur wo aapki baat sahi hai wo aisa nahi hai ki india specific hai it's unique to cultures aur aisa ecosystem to sumit ji chaah rahe hain hum to har country ki reports pad rahe hain aaj ke din hai na paper mein i mean you can say it's part of hum ye kehte hain ki america mein nahi america mein bhi cops jo hain bade corrupt mane jate hain kai stories aati hain papers mein वहां भी ऐसा हो रहा है वहां भी ड्रग्स बेचे जा रहे हैं ना वहां भी ऐसा हो रहा है इंडिया में थोड़ा ज्यादा विजिबल है खुल्लम खुल्ला होता है खुल्लम खुल्ला होता है आपका ट्रैफिक वाला आज भी आपसे खुल्लम खुल्ला पैसा लेता है एंड हीज नो ही हेज नो फियर यू नो सो इको सिस्टम जो सुमित जी का बड़ा आइडियलिस्टिक एक एस्पिरेशन है और आई थिंक डॉक्टर राज विल है वेरी टफ टाइम आंसरिंग दिस क्वेश्चन नहीं दिस इज ए धर्मा This is this is is dharma. Ye, <laughs> ye, ye. Sab, bhi jab gaadi se aate hai, subhe, hum to daily ek, ek bande ko to dekhte hai, and I observe this guy blatantly, shamelessly, you know, accepting a hundred rupee note or पचास तो आज कल लेते भी नहीं है पुलिस वाले है ना ट्रैफिक वाले और उसे कोई डर ही नहीं है की कोई फोटो ले लेगा और उसको एक्सपोज कर देगा बिकॉज 
ये सुमित जी ने जो वर्ड यूज किया इको सिस्टम इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द इको सिस्टम एवरीवेयर नॉट ओनली इन इंडिया एवरीवेयर तो दैट्स ओके ना आई मीन थोड़ा सा ये यानी आई डोंट नो हाउ हमारा इन्फ्लुएंस कितना है इन चीजों में ये तो इंडिविजुअल से आएगा सब मुझे नहीं लगता कि कोई भी गवर्नमेंट कुछ कर सकती है इस डायरेक्शन में लाइक यू नो गवर्नमेंट्स आर ट्राइंग देयर बेस्ट बट लोअर लेवल पे चल रहे हैं और कहीं भी चलने दीजिए आई मीन दिस इज ओके दैट्स नाउ आई थिंक सौम्या जी का एक चैट है एंड समी शुड रीड दैट चैट सो मानसी कैन यू रीड इट लेट्स गिव इक्वल यस सर please uh, somya has written love for nature should be part of our early growth positive and negative are part of divine creation what we need is the wisdom to act knowing the difference okay it's an observation and theek hai it's a good observation ma'am love for nature aaj ke syllabus mein ek bahut achhi baat hai ki we are observing ki in all across all schools and educational boards love for environment is being inculcated from childhood actually ye bahut acha hai i think even dr raj and sumit ji should be happy with this development ki aaj ki generation they are very conscious of uh, many and uh, of, you know they are conscious of ethics you know especially environmental ethics and even family <coughs> ethics national ethics also you know i can remember ki how the college crowds were so proud of uh, you know you know wing commander abhimanyu and uh, आवर कैप्टन जो उनका क्या नाम था उनका जो ताज में शहीद हो गए थे ना उन्नी उन्नी कृष्णन तो यंग जनरेशन वॉज एक्चुअली यू नो दे ग्रो इमोशनल एंड द काइंड ऑफ सोशल मीडिया का जो एक प्राउड फीलिंग चल रहा था उस समय इंडिया के बारे में डॉक्टर कटारिया का भी ओपिनियन सब कटारिया सब यंगर जनरेशन की uh, जो इनका ऑब्जर्वेशन है सौम्या जी का कि after kataria is not there anyway so no more observe observation observation no more questions from the audience are we on track or we have 5 10 minutes sumit ji sir i have to leave so i take your permission sab aap hi chale jayenge to fir then there is no need to encourage the audience to ask more questions and i'm थैंक यू डॉक्टर राज सर आपने ये फुल फिल डर एक्सपेक्टेशंस का सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू कैन यू टेक अ स्क्रीनशॉट प्लीज मानसी यस सर डॉक्टर साहब आपका प्रिया जी सर ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आई टेकन दिस स्क्रीनशॉट थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू thanks doctor uh, thank you doctor i uh, will come and meet you uh, in person okay thanks our next session shall be on 21st of january for details the details shall be published on our uh, web pages and the uh, facebook uh, linkedin and in instagram please follow us and like us on these pages it shall be published on monday for the upcoming session ICS is pleased to provide you all its research and development. We have published books on integrated management system, excellence in education management, ISO made in easy in Gujarati, Marathi, Telugu, and Hindi. For reading any of these books, you may please contact Sushma Kindalkar on the given number and the email address. Your feedback is of utmost importance, which gives us a chance to improve on our. each and every webinar please register on www.sadgunsang.org and please provide your feedback
Thank you for being a part of the Sadgun Sang on Indian Ethos, the lighthouse for MSME. We officially close this ceremony. Thank you everyone for being part of this ceremony.